Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's February 7th, 2020. And the poem that I'm going to share with you today is by an American poet named Stanley Kunitz. He lived from 1905 to 2006 and was the uh, twice was the Poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry to the Library of Congress in 1974 and in 2000. He also won the National Book Award and the Robert Frost Medal. The poem that I'm going to read today is called The Round. It goes like this. Light splashed this morning on the shell pink anemones swaying on their tall stems. Down blue spiked Veronica, light flowed in rivulets over the humps of the honeybees. This morning I saw light kiss the silk of the roses in their second flowering. My late bloomers flushed with their brandy. A curious gladness shook me. So I have shut the doors of my house. So I have trudged downstairs to my cell. So I am sitting in semi-dark, hunched over my desk with nothing for a view to tempt me but a bloated compost heap, steamy old stink pile under my window. And I pick my notebook up and I start to read aloud the still wet words I scribbled on the blotted page. Light splashed. I can scarcely wait till tomorrow when a new life begins for me, as it does each day, as it does each day. So there's a few choices that I uh, I'm, I'm interested in in this poem. It's a three stanza poem. The third stanza is only four lines, the last two of which actually repeat. The first stanza is 12 lines, and the second stanza is 14 lines. So that's just some context for you. The first stanza, basically those first 11 lines operate in uh, sets of three. So the beginning goes, light splashed this morning on the shell pink anemones swaying on their tall stems, semicolon. So that's the first trio of lines there. Down blue spiked Veronica, light flowed in rivulets over the humps of the honeybees. So we get two lines of enjambment or two sets of enjambment there. That's another trio of lines, so to speak. And so it keeps doing that until the last trio of lines. And I'm using some informal speech there, but that's okay. My late bloomers flushed with their brandy. And then there's a period and it says, a curious gladness shook me. And I like that because this pattern has, has been set in this stanza. And then all of a sudden at the end, on a line that is meant to be about a curious gladness shaking him or awakening him, that form is sort of altered and that sort of shakes you out of the pattern. So the first, the pattern is consistent with the images of the different things that he's seeing and taking in and he's kind of getting, um, uh, not lulled to sleep. I don't want to say that, but he's sort of getting transfixed by the things that he's looking at. There's a sort of magic about them, the light splashing in the morning and the flowers and uh, the honeybees and the way the light kisses the silk of the roses. All those sorts of things are transfixing him. They're kind of mesmerizing him. But then a curious gladness shakes him. You know, there's a self-consciousness to his gladness that shakes him. And in the same way, that line there shakes us out of the sort of transfixed, the, the, the sort of transfixed state that we can get when reading that nicely patterned first stanza. So I really think that's interesting. And then of course, at the end, I'll just point out, as I said, that there are two lines that repeat as it does each day, as it does each day. And the poem is called The Round, but the words The Round never show up in the poem. In a way, these last two lines, this couplet here of rep repeating this repeated line uh, serves as the fill-in for the, the, the title of The Round. Time, like a clock going round and round, as it does each day, as it does each day. And I wonder if Kunitz, if he was reading this, would would say that I should be reading those two lines differently, different emphasis, as it does each day. I mean, should I be emphasizing the each? Should I be reading the second one faster, more contemplative? You know, should I alter the way that I'm reading that last line? In some ways, I wonder if it wouldn't be more, um, there'd be more of a powerful end stop if it just said, I can scarcely wait till tomorrow when a new life begins for me as it does each day. Like the poem could end there and be a good poem. But the extra, the extra repetition of that line there adds that 
adds so much more um, energy to the poem in a sense. And what I'm going to say is kind of counter to what I just said about energy, but it adds a sort of stasis to the poem. And what I mean is stasis in the sense that we never know what's going to come next. At the end of the poem, we don't know what the next thing is that the poet's going to see, nor do we know the next thing that we're going to see. So even though it adds some thematic and formal energy to the poem, it's also a reminder that what whatever comes next is going to be a surprise. It's going to, and and hopefully a curious gladness will shake us when we see it. So this is a it's an interesting poem, and uh, I'll read it one more time for you. The Round by Stanley Kunitz. Light splashed this morning on the shell pink anemones swaying on their tall stems. Down blue spiked Veronica, light flowed in rivulets over the humps of the honeybees. This morning I saw light kiss the silk of the roses in their second flowering. My late bloomers flushed with their brandy. A curious gladness shook me. So I have shut the doors of my house. So I have trudged downstairs to my cell. So I am sitting in semi-dark, hunched over my desk, with nothing for a view to tempt me but a bloated compost heap, steamy old stink pile under my window. And I pick my notebook up and I start to read aloud the... And I pick my notebook up and I start to read aloud the still wet words I scribbled on the blotted page. Light splashed. I can scarcely wait till tomorrow when a new life begins for me, as it does each day, as it does each day. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back on Monday with another poem for you.